Here we can see the SMA diagnostic algorithm. And uh, as you can see, the first step is the clinical suspicion of SMA. And uh, for that, it's very important to recognize the main clinical findings of SMA. After that, we can go directly to the genetic test. And frequently, we use a test that will detect the deletion in SMN1. Uh, it can be the MLPA or qPCR. And based on the number of copies of SMN1, we can have different results. So here we can have uh, uh, no uh, any copies and uh, zero copy. Uh, and uh, it, it means that the patient has a mosaicos deletion and it confirms the SMA diagnosis. So it represents 95% of the patients. Uh, we can find one copy of SMN1, and uh, in this situation, we have to go on with the sequencing of SMN1 because uh, we can look for, we need to look for to a point, point mutation in the other allele. So we found a point mutation in one allele and a deletion in the other allele. We can confirm the SMA uh, diagnosis. And it represents around 5 to 10% of the patients that have the compound heterozygous mutation. And the third situation is if uh, we found uh, two copies of SMN1. So in this situation, frequently we will rule out the diagnosis of SMA. And it's important to go on with uh, other different uh, diagnostic tests for neuromuscular disorders, include uh, CK level, electromyography, and also uh, exome or genome sequencing. But uh, in families that has consanguinity uh, with two copies of SMN1, it's important to go on with the SMN1 sequencing uh, to try to see if there is two point mutations. If we found one point mutation in each allele, we, we can uh, confirm the SMA diagnosis. In parallel, the MLPA will give us some information about the uh, proper numbers of SMN2. And we know that this is very important since uh, this ha has a predictive value of SMA severity. And also it's important to uh, allow us to start with, with the new therapies.